last thing that I want to show is going to be a, a fillet and a section plane, and it has to do with this new tool called asymmetric fillets. Now, asymmetric fillets, um, really the name speaks for itself, but I want to cover a little bit of the history of the fillet. Right here on the part, we have a round fillet. And since the dawn of time, every fillet that we've done in SOLIDWORKS has been a radius. So it's been a tangent transition from one face to another. And in SOLIDWORKS uh, 2014, actually 2013 we started adding conics, but in 2014 we changed the profile capabilities to actually be able to make this from a circular profile to something called either a conic row or a conic radius. Now if we use conic row, what that would allow us to do is manipulate the geometry of this profile. And by changing the row value from 0 to 1, which is a ratio, by making it larger, we make what is really more of a parabolic fillet that is tangent to the start and end faces, but is a little bit sharper out at the end. The bigger that number gets, the sharper it is. If we switch that row value to something under 4.1.42, it actually goes to more of a chamfered face, but there's still a tangency at the top and the bottom. So it's a completely different way to associate this. Same is true with the conic radius. It's just different numbers and in input. Well, now what we've done is actually changed it up to allow from not just a symmetric fillet method, but to an asymmetric fillet. And what that simply means is different dimensions in different directions. So if here we say 5 in one direction and 10 in the other, what I now have is a trail off, um, or what we call a setback here on this fillet. We can switch directions, so the 5 is vertical and the 10 is the long leg. But in any event, that's now going to create a profile which is no longer based on a simple radius. This is now based on an elliptical shape. So once this finishes generating, you'll see how much more relaxed the surfacing transition, the fillet that we have between the top face and the outer body of this casting happens to be. This type of feature is used extensively in things like thermal forming, especially when gas tanks are involved, because gas tanks have a, uh, you know, an issue where they need to make sure that the integrity of the walls is clear everywhere for pressure concerns. All right, I've got a 3D point in the middle of this, and this is going to be the last thing we show. This 3D point here, I'm going to place a plane at that point. Now, plane at a point is nothing new, but orientation-wise, we would need some sort of secondary or tertiary input, parallel to another plane, through another edge, uh, a lot of other things. Well, now we have a new input here, which is simply called create a plane parallel to our screen. So through that point, and now parallel to my monitor, when I click this button, it's now going to make a plane that's basically the white space of my graphics area. So if we roll that around, you'll see that it put it exactly where we thought that was going to be. Now, by using that plane, there's a lot of reasons we do this, but a lot of people like to interrogate their parts from just the way they're looking at it. And if I go ahead and take this plane and use that as the interrogation method, I can basically take section views like a CT scan here in the orientation that I happen to be looking. Now, this is also a very fluid type of thing as well. If I take that plane and, and use it as is, that's great. But if I take that plane and actually say edit, we can roll this to any orientation we want. We can then say update plane, and it will take a new flat plane based on my orientation. That way, when I go ahead and update my section view, same thing. We're just looking at it from the plane direction that we happen to be sitting. So with that, again, I want to thank you for your time today. Let me go ahead and pull over my, uh, my questions box here and just see what kind of questions people have been asking today. Uh, and then we'll take a look here. Okay, so one of the questions is, is, is the mirrored sheet metal part a referenced part or other derived parts? So, example, the right-hand part um, is uh, both sides update. Uh, whenever you mirror a component, by definition, yes, it is associative to the original. So what will happen is at the point in the feature tree, um, actually the entire feature tree if the part does update and you add geometry, uh, but the exported or mirrored version is associative to the original part. So if the original sheet metal component does change, then the mirrored part will change, and then any features that you've added to the tree of the mirrored component will then um, update after it in history. So, yes, they are always associative. You can break it if you want to, but anytime you do a derived component, whether it's a mirrored part, um, even the uh, save as assembly in the weldments I was showing previous, uh, that would also make the assembly that is the result of a multi-body part associative back to the multi-body part. So they all keep a nice link there. All right. So... With that, um, I think everything has been covered with our session. And again, I want to just really thank you a lot for spending your lunch with us. Uh, I know you have a valuable time, and on a Friday you're probably getting ready for the weekend. You've got to get some, uh, some things taken care of. So again, we appreciate your time. It's not lost on us how, uh, how important this time is to you. So we hope this was a benefit of you. 
Um, for any of you that are still holding on that would like to participate quickly here in one more poll, just want to see what features you maybe thought were, uh, were not necessarily the most important, but maybe uh, the ones that you thought were most interesting with this particular release of the software. Yeah, so I'm kind of getting some, some overwhelming things in the areas that I thought. Um, BIM and MBD aren't getting much, uh, much headway, but MBD is a brand new thing, so I'm sure that's uh, you know, kind of the first time many of you have seen that. All right, so it looks good on the poll. Let me just go ahead and share that with everybody, just to, to throw that up on the screen a little bit. So I figured weldments would have been the, uh, the most used, therefore the most important to most of you out there. And then uh, the chain pattern is going to be interesting for anybody that's been trying to get this done, uh, but really has never had a great method to do this. So once again, thank you very, very much for spending the time with us. Um, have a great afternoon, great weekend, and if you have any questions, please get a hold of us through either your sales rep or through our Decide technical support. Have a great afternoon.